When you said that story earlier about how you first met Perks, he was really cocky. I've got an interesting question on this because actually, like, I had the same experience. Like, he even flamed me on Twitter before I even became an LEC player. Like, I went back and looked at it. It actually was, like, his account and everything. And what people don't know is he'll even admit, like, I did a reflections with him. He admit that times he was a very cocky player. Like, he said, for example, in that funnel meta in Seasons 8 Summer, the one where you were, like, having to play Brown and then he was just, like, on whatever he wanted, like, Swain. And it was, like, the ultimate funnel of, like, he was, like, the god carry. He even says right for real that because it was so much fun to just be like the ultimate carry with all the resources he even did like his ego got huge and he thought he was like the best player in the world or something and he even claims <laughs> right that the reason he let Caps join G2 wasn't you know because like, oh Caps is better than me and I should roll he said he thought it was like I've already beaten everyone at mid so I'm just going to go and beat like Reckless and all the AD carries now it's an easy roll so he actually does sound mad cocky but obviously later when you win championships and when you've had all yeah, the success yeah. like I mean, it sort like, of backs kind of it up easy. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's what I want to ask like... is it who is Perks as a person? I mean, I think I think he is very cocky. I don't know if he's still cocky because I didn't work with him for a long time now, but he used to be very cocky. He used to think he is, uh, you know, the best. And he also used to, like, back it up. So I think the, the thing that, like, made him good is, like, the willingness to work hard so that he learns the champions um, he needs to learn. I think when he rolls up to AD Kere, he's like, Zaya Kaisa got famous because he was playing them to a very, very high level. He could also play other champions. Not always to add like the same success, but I mean, we have to remember that Caps also rolls up to ADK for like a split, right? And it didn't work the same Definitely not. as it worked with Perks, <laughs> right? So um, I think that he was cocky, but he also had like the work ethic to back it up and he also had the game knowledge to back it up. And I think he was like very good mechanically and that made him play well mid lane and he had good mid understanding. And even when like Caps and he, he would like argue with Cubs about mid lane when he was playing AD Carry because he knew they're all so well, right? So they could have discussions about mid lane. And he also understood bot lane from like a mid lane perspective. And that also made him better in a way because he knew when to play for Pryo and not to play for Pryo. And what he required of his mid laner, or rather what his mid lane required of him to carry. Uh, because I think we played for Cubs quite a lot as well. So yeah, I think he was a very cocky person. But if you start your career and you like start winning every split, and then he's like keep on winning for like so many years. And the only years where he didn't win was, I think, 2018, where he was in uh, my, like the art generation of G2, where we, play, we played second and we didn't win the final. And then again, 1920, two championships. Then he went to Cloud9, he won another championship. Um, and then I guess since, he, since that one Cloud9 championship, he didn't, he didn't actually win in a while now, but he was winning only, right? So I, I can understand that his brain would be like, holy shit, I'm the best player in the world, I'm the best player in the West, I'm so fucking insane, I'm winning everything. And, and same, similar goes to Caps, but I think Caps was cocky even before he started winning. I think Caps is like a smug mid laner as well. He always, like even back in the day when he was in the Turkish team in, in 2016, he told me stories that like, if he was old enough to go to Worlds that year, he would like destroy the H2K. <laughs> because he, he, he said that okay. like, he, he, I remember him saying stories that like, that year he could have been at Worlds, but he was too young, I think. But if he was at Worlds with like his team, <laughs> he would destroy us. Okay. <laughs> and I don't know why he mentioned specifically H2K. I sure. think it's because, you know, I was there and yeah. I was playing with him. So he just wanted to make fun of me. But yeah, he was the smart, he, he was the smart mid laner too. And he was the very cocky player to like take on anyone, be it Western or Eastern mid laners. He was like the one that like, if you give him resources, if you play around him, he will play to his limits and he will beat them. Now it's a little bit of a shame to watch him because he uh, is playing more of a supportive style. Uh, I think it's needed. And I think people forget that right now they blame him a lot. He's saying, oh, he's not at his peak. He's not as good. I think it's natural that he needs to learn this style. I mean, he was the one that I was playing around the most for like so many years. And same goes for Broxa. Like he was the carry mid laner. He was the god. He was the star of Europe. You know, he was the one going toe to toe with all the best Eastern mid laners along like Perks, right? So I think that is natural if you play a new style, if resources don't, don't come to you, in opposite, you are the resources coming to other lanes. It's natural to make more mistakes. It's natural to int more. It's natural to die. Same goes to Faker when he's playing out too. No one is going to argue that Faker is not like a gold mid laner. But yeah, sure, he can look bad in some games. And same goes to, to Caps, right? Maybe there's other mid laners that can look a, a little bit better than him in, in other games. But I mean, if you're asking me who the best mid lane in Europe is, I would still say it's Caps. I understand that Larsen can be very strong on his mages. I understand that um, Niski can be a better facilitator than Capsis. I understand that, like, 
nuclear in had a pop of Cassiopeia games. I, I suppose Perix would be the argument. I think Perix has been playing very well this year as well. And he, he arguably is like one of the best ones too. But I still feel like Caps, you know, should be considered like probably the best one, you know, because he can, if he is on the carry, if he, the game is for him, he can really 1v9. And Shurji too is trying a, a different approach now. They are playing more of a carry jungle start style, carry bot lane style, and Caps BB are the facilitators and it always doesn't always work for them. But long term being able to play both is 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 good. You know, long term being able to play if Caps looks in Silas, I know he's gonna do well. Right? And now he's trying to learn the Nautilus, the any, the whatever it is to, you know, sometimes run down and not have the best game. So I'm I'm very curious how where this is gonna lead to. I'm very very curious how they're gonna do what works with this style, right? But I mean, again, I'm I'm just very <laughs> sad to see so many people like looking down on him when I still think he's a great player, and I think there's a reason why this is happening. And I went through the same thing. Why I'm trying to justify it as well. I went through the same thing in 2020 when I didn't really play carry jungles for a long time with G2 uh, for the whole 19. I was like stuck on the facilitators. And same goes for half of 2020, Stagon Facilitator. So we never really explored me playing carries and how the map state would change. And then suddenly when I logged in Graves and I was farming, my whole team would just like end everywhere. Every land would die nonstop because they would permatrade and I wasn't there to support them. I wasn't there to like fight. Um, and it's the same thing now where like he has to play a completely different style than what he's used to. So it's just not as simple for him. And it's way easier to make mistakes and it's way easier to win. And it's also, you know, just easier to like die. And it's easier to like look bad, even when maybe he's carrying the comms or maybe he has good ideas. It's just easier to look bad, you know. So I'm, I'm sure his team values him. That's the most important. But, you know, I also want to bring some value to him because I enjoy working with him for so many years. I think he was a great player. I think he was a great teammate. I, I really, really like him. So, you know, I hope that people would like back him up more to see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't